Vertical integration sounds like a complex term like supply chain management, logistics or the machine builds a machine. But at the end of the day, it's not that complicated. So that sounds a little bit strange from an engineer of machining, right? But give me a little bit of your time and I'm trying to explain why I believe Tesla is very well positioned to come better out of the crisis because they are more vertically integrated than anybody else. We live in a world of complex worldwide supply chains that are like a secret network of suppliers and product steps with parts, semi-finished and finished products that are often shipped a few times around the world before consumers found them finally in their hands, ready to be used in their end product. This is kind of the secret that is the reality in the world we are living in. Companies do know that, and automotive companies do know that since a long time. We are living in a world where supply chains are competing against each other and not products. That may sound strange to you because all what you see and touch and feel and experience is a product, but the product is determined by the supply chain underneath, and without a working supply chain, the products that you have in your hands will never be there and would never be there because of cost, time and logistics reasons and companies probably couldn't produce them because they couldn't make a profit with it. That's one of the reasons why automotive companies have been outsourcing their supplier parts and systems and everything around it including services to external companies. Suppliers, suppliers of suppliers, suppliers of suppliers of suppliers, and you name it. You could continue like that like crazy. By doing that, they've been able to force them with a cost down, down, down. And with every, every down move of the cost, they've been more profitable. There's been more dividends, there's been more bonuses for the top managers, and there's been more happy shareholders. These are, if you will, the positive implications of an outsourced supply chain or a low vertical integration. But there are also negative implications around it. Um, because it's complex and includes a lot of opportunity for error and failure as the end product only works if all comes together as required in the right time and with no single part missing. If one single part is missing or late, you won't be able to finish your product, you won't be able to sell it, and with that, you are not in business anymore. The supply chain is only as valuable as the weakest part, and if you have many parts, like in a vehicle, you have many opportunities to have a weakest part that is missing or does not work as it's supposed to. So all of that shows there is strength around outsourcing most of your parts and production steps to external suppliers, but there's also a big weakness here around the risk you are getting in by outsourcing this. If you outsource everything, there is an opportunity for failure, and that opportunity of failure is not under your control. If you are in a crisis like we are right now, in the corona crisis, where every supplier is more or less down at the moment, you just don't know how fast it can ramp up again. If we talk about the issues and challenges of the automotive industry and about Tesla, we have to distinguish between two phases. Phase number one is a lockdown we have at the moment with about 30 to 50% of all volumes of automakers is down, they are just not producing. At least here in Germany, all production is down. Then you have a phase two, which is a ramp up phase. So one day, the supply chains are starting again, they are restarting again, they are trying to restart again. That's gonna be the moment of truth, because at that moment in time, you're gonna have a situation where all suppliers, and we talk about thousands of parts and service steps, where all of the suppliers need to restart in a perfect world at the right moment in time, with the right amount of parts and the right quality at the right place. You can imagine that this is not going to happen. So to restart 
a complex supply chain is much more difficult. It's way more complicated than to re restart a supply chain where you just have less parts and where you have less suppliers and where you have the situation where something needs to be produced and delivered at a certain point in time in the right quality and amount to the right place under control. The irony of the story is that Tesla never really wanted to be vertically integrated. They've been forced to do so by the market. Suppliers simply did not supply to them what they've been asking for or because they could not or they didn't want to. I mean, think about it. There has been just no batteries that Tesla could purchase that really been fitting to what they've been looking for. There has been no software that fulfilled all the requirements and nobody even could offer this for a vehicle like Model 3, Model Y or whatever. There's been just no seats that provided the experience Tesla has been looking for. And nowadays, if you think about the castings where, you know, it's kind of 70 to 1 parts, so there's a massive reduction in production complexity. And there's been nobody ever doing that. The automotive industry is not doing a lot of castings. And there's no logic reason why. The only reason why is because they are making their money with other things and they have outsourced everything and suppliers just don't do the investment for this massive press that you need in order to be able to produce those. So I could continue with tons of reasons why the market, and this was not done intentionally, the market pressed Tesla to be more vert vertically integrated and now this plays into the hands of Tesla because it's lower risks. And lower risks is everything everybody is looking at for the moment and every everybody wants. Talking about competitive advantage in a crisis is talking about two phases. Phase number one is when production is down, which is actually still the case. And in that situation, everybody is in the same situation. So there is no competitive advantage simply because there is no output. But the moment you restart again, like we've seen in China, when production is slowly going up again, you're gonna see the big advantage a more vertical integrated company like Tesla has. There was nobody out there who's been able to produce and ramp up that fast and that is competitive advantage on a big margin. You easily can lose, if you go down in production for let's say two months, you can easily lose another two months simply because you need to you know, account for all the hiccups you're gonna have in supply chain with the suppliers that can't deliver. But if most of the suppliers are kind of in-house and you control them locally because you're sourcing 100% of your parts nearby, you're gonna have a more easy time. I'm not saying that Tesla is doing this already. I mean, they are targeting for 100% sourcing in China and there are still parts that are coming from the US, but these parts are coming from Tesla. So guess what? I mean, being able to deliver the same parts, you just reduce risks. So this is a big competitive advantage and it should not be underestimated what it means on the long run for the ramp curve. We talk about exponentiality and we talk about a lot of money, revenue, cash flow and profits. Having worked more than 20 years in supply chain management myself, I've been exposed to vertical integration kind of all my business life. So the vertical integration of Tesla has been born out of desperation, forced from the supplier industry and is now kind of the secret source where Tesla will come better out of the crisis than any other automaker in the market. On top of that, there is an aspect that I didn't talk about, which is Given the vertically integrated structure, Tesla is better positioned to innovate further than and quicker than any other automaker. And you see this again with the casting structure. And I tell you, as an engineer, I'm crazily excited about that. But it would just blow up the video if I would talk a little bit more about it. The other thing I'm extremely excited about is the heating system, let's call it like that. 
that heating and cooling system that Tesla implemented in the Model Y, which is another massive, massive advantage, not only from the technology perspective, but also from innovation and vertical integration. So that's another plus, but again, I don't want to make it too long. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like or dislike and subscribe. Thank you.